Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Richard, um, as ever, a guinea a minute. We're followed by, bringing up the rear at the moment, Neil Petrie. Neil, direct democracy, a lot of fun. Come on, Neil, come and, come and tell us how it is. We'll, go, we'll get rid of all these terrible people in Parliament and in councils with, all the, with everybody that's here today. Neil, there you go. Yeah, thank you, Liz, for getting me on after Richard. That's a real boon. <laughs> OK, uh, it's a bit of death by PowerPoint on this occasion. Sometimes it's just a talk, but uh, there's a few facts and figures and other things I thought would be worth presenting. Can you hear me at the back all right? Right. Can we have it on? My... What did I press? Ah, there we go. Got it. Thank you very much. Technical issues. Right. Direct democracy movement. Yeah, press the arrow. I'll go back. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, first, just a big thanks to our sponsors today. If we can have the next slide, and I'll try it again. There you go. <laughs> they pay me very well. <laughs> now, these guys obviously are what is currently uh, the system. They represent what is you know, putting us down. And, uh, but they're not, not the only ones who've ever done this. Next one, please. It's worth a read. This is from 1950, all right? And uh, Mark, War sorry, James Warburg, famous banker, family of bankers, here you are back in the 1950s, talking about the world becoming one. So there's nothing new, but they're not there yet, are they? And they're not going to get there, because we, are, we in the direct democracy movement represent their worst enemy, because we're a practical way of dealing with this a proper political way where you, every one of us, can play our part. Hence, I'm selling my book at the back here, one vote away, but that's afterwards. Anyway. Right, next one, can we try the next? Right, so our aim today is just really to inform you to reform. It's to explain how if we reform our political system, and it can be done and we're in the process of doing so, then we can change everything. OK? Because you're voting for something. You're voting for a better process which gives you supremacy over the politicians. That's what this is about. OK? Instead of having to choose between two bad options, you can choose a better way forward. Next. Thanks. So, if you wouldn't mind sticking your hand up, if you think that politicians and civil servants listen to you. No? No hands? OK. Next one, please. Or do you think that politicians put you, the voter, before the party? Hands up, please. No, nothing. Okay, we'll try another one. So, would you like to live in a country where the people rule and the politicians take orders? Thank you. Good. We're getting there, we're getting there. Right, next one, please. Right, that's the Swiss solution, okay? There's a system in place right now that does these things that we're talking about, okay? Because it's about the people leading, and they've got a process that lets them do that. And it's not the parties that run the place. And the Swiss politicians don't like this system. So that says a lot to me. What about you? All right, next one, please. So what you've got is the tools of direct democracy sitting over the top of the representative system. In other words, the people directly control the political parties and the political discussion. Okay, so you've still got representatives, but you'll see in a second how they work in Switzerland. And I, I call it the hybrid solution. You can call it a semi-direct democracy as well. Either way, it's a much better system than what we've got, and they've had this since 1848. Next slide, there. Right, so what are the benefits? I was told, sell the benefits, sell the benefits. So here we go. Right. Can we go back one? There. Sorry, yeah. Now, here are the benefits. They get the final say on every bit of legislation coming out of Parliament. 
doesn't mean that they vote on it every time, but if they want to have a vote on it, and they get enough support, they can get a vote on it. So they control every single thing. You think about it in the UK, if we had that at a national level, where would we be with the WHO, immigration, or recalling MPs? This is where you've got a better system in place. At local level, if we could do that with ULEs, 15-minute cities, or, you know, education, because over there, the education system is at Canton level, like uh, county level. Now, if you look at it, they control, the people control all government spending, because ultimately, they control every single law coming out or every piece of regulation out of their local government. So that's why, as you'll see here, our debt is 100% of our annual gross domestic domestic product. Switzerland's is 40%, 40%. So, you know, the debt burden is much less and the interest rates are much, well, the interest is obviously a lot lower too. So you can decide where you spend your taxes, they do, and you can decide how much you're gonna spend. But, you know, they have fantastic services out there, fantastic hospitals, fantastic schooling, because the people are guiding the schooling as well. Next one, please. Okay, and the reason the schooling is good is because the people manage it, not some educators or some political party. It'll be you deciding what you want your children and your grandchildren to be treated like at school. And maybe they might not have those drag queens coming in to tell them how to dance. Okay, now, the other thing, a lot of people like this one. They only work 12 weeks of the year, the MPs, and they're only getting paid a daily rate. They're not interfering all day. They come in for four, three-week stints every year. So most of them have got normal jobs outside. So th this is, these are the, the advantages. So you can have this here. You've just got to stick the direct democracy system on top. And you've all got on your seat, or you would have had, you know, our little diagram of our proposed system for use you know, in Britain. Can we go back again? Oh, is, that, is my time over, is it? He doesn't like it. You get him off. <laughs> oh, you see, technical. Oh, nothing. Everybody's off. We're finished. Thank you very much. Uh, back up. I'm not there yet. Quite back. Keep going. Yeah, back. 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 Keep going. Uh, uh, no, stop there. Come back. <laughs> Next. Go forward. 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 Right, that'll do. Thank you very much. Right. We're back on, don't worry. Right. Normal service is resumed. Right. Okay, so the Swiss semi-direct democracy. The sovereignty would reside with us if we were the same as then. Next one, please. Okay. They exercise supreme political power. Remember, it's the exercise of power that counts. But they do. They have that option. Next one, please. They use it through these optional referendums. I mentioned that every law coming out of Parliament, they get the option to have a referendum on it. They get 50,000 signatures, so you've got to get some people backing you, 1% basically of the voters. Then you can have a referendum on any, any law coming out. I'm not saying Switzerland's perfect, by the way, but I'm saying it's a, it's a damn good step up. You know, This is the point that you will be in charge. And then the next one's a very interesting one as well. Next slide, please. Okay, th this is the initiative, so any of you could try and implement any single law you thought should be applied in Britain. You'd write it up, you get it approved, and then you put it through the system, and then if you got 2% of the votes, i.e., you know, there's 100,000 over there, it'd be about a million people here, then you'd be able to get this put to a national referendum, first past the post, if you win, your law becomes national law. So. Uh, this is where, you know, if you're thinking about sovereignty issues, common law issues, whatever it is you've got uh, is in your mind, you use this system. Uh, we're not offering you a manifesto, we're offering you a system that you should back. And anyone who's offering this, I'd recommend that you be voting for them, because they're the ones who'll get this for you. No party, no normal party, no current party is going to go for this. Next one, please. Okay, can we just do the next slide? All right. So as I say, we're not a party, we're just a movement, but our aim is to have a greater Britain, which I think is worth having. Next one, please. Right, you've all hopefully got this. This lays out the system. The whole process is laid out for you. We've thought this through, and this is what we've come up with. 
and it basically follows and matches much of what the Swiss have already done. I wanted to give people the idea that it's something that is already in practice and that you know, it's working right now. Next one, please. So, in fact, right now, just yesterday or the day before, our movement got picked up by Neil Oliver's group um, that is dealing with direct democracy to become the, the focus of all of the uh, efforts by people who are looking at direct democracy like this. And don't forget, you know, we've got people like Nigel Farage and Andrew Bridgen supporting, you know, Swiss-style direct democracy. Andrew Bridgen's a very big supporter. Now, what we're doing is, the first thing is, there's a petition already in place. It started before we got this thing going. Uh, just a couple of days back, but basically we're looking at, they're looking at getting 500,000 signatures and you'd be able to have a referendum in this country on a petition put forward. We're going to do it slightly differently next time, but this is the one that's in process now. So if you look at Twitter, the DD right now, then you can go and see the materials on there or on uh, our website, DD right now. Now, um, as I say, we're working with Neil Oliver's group as well on this. Can I have the next slide, please? All right, now, th this guy, many of us don't know him, but he's a Victorian lawyer, probably the most famous constitutional lawyer in Britain's history. And uh, this is what he said. I'm quite certain that once established, the referendum would never be got rid of by anything short of a revolution. So if he thinks it's going to have a revolution if you try and get rid of it, it's telling you it's worth having, isn't it? You know, that this thing, but we want it done peacefully, hence why we're saying vote for people. Don't score through your thing and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. You've got to take positive action and we're giving you a, hopefully a positive solution that you'll support and like. Next one please. Right, next again, this is block vote. Now, uh, if you could play this, it's a short um, video on a system that we're supporting. Do and, you ever uh, feel like your vote is just a formality? Like no one's listening? You're not alone. Many of us are tired of entrusting politicians to make decisions for us, knowing that we'll be let down. But what if you could vote on issues that directly affect your life, like crippling taxation and money printing, invasive surveillance, net zero goals, and uncontrolled mass immigration? That's a direct democracy where you have a say in all the issues that affect your daily life. BlockVote exists to make direct democracy a reality. And by using the latest blockchain technology, we ensure all votes are secure, publicly verifiable and anonymous. In this way, we stop fraud, fight corruption, and put ordinary families back in the driving seat. Imagine a world, a world where you are in control. Support your local direct democracy candidate. Take a stand on issues raised by our partners across the country and be part of the future decision-making process. The time to act is now. Democracy is evolving and you don't want to be left behind. Block vote. Your voice, your choice, your future. Don't let it go to waste. Join us now at www.blockvote.org. Right. I'm not saying everyone would support this or that it will be supported. However, this is an option because it's blockchain, it's highly secure, and it's a system that is publicly verifiable. So it's much more interesting to young people, to be honest. You know, uh, th this is the type of thing that we're helping develop because it is it's blockchain, you know, it's used for all banking transactions, etc. So we're helping the guy who's developing, Richard, who's here today, helping him develop it by making it workable on the ground. And then the people will decide if they want to use it or not, because we can carry on voting as we are, but in the future, we'd want a system that has been tested and proven before it's put into use. So we're helping with that, but it's there. So blockchain is a way forward for electronic voting, potentially, when the people accept it. Until that day, you don't use it. But once it's been proven, then people might want to use it. But I wanted you to be aware that we're helping develop it because we believe that, you know, that people in the future might want something like this and it should be tried and tested. And it's being used now and it's developing fast. All right, next one, please. Right, next. That's it. All right, so how do we do this? Well, it's down to you, it's down to me, it's down to all of us. Okay, we've got to take action. As I said, it's a positive thing. And um, you'll see, you can stand for election for yourself. And it's surprising how quickly people will stand up for this because it's positive. They can see there's a future for their grandkids that's better than what we've, we're handing on to them right now. And we need to change. Uh, uh, vote for candidates backing direct democracy. They're out there, they're starting to pick up, um, you know, we're picking up numbers. But we need more and more people to stand forward. I say we're not a party, but there are people who are. 
um, running behind this. Now, that one-page infographic you've all got, that is a magic bit of kit. Our guy down in Brighton who's been using this regularly, he meets Labour councillors, Green councillors, um, uh, trade union people, ex-Tories, whatever it is, and he's, he's handing this over to them, reform people, others just down the pub when they're talking politics, he has a few in his pocket, takes it out, hands it over, has that conversation, says, well, just take it home, have a look at it. The people go home, they have a look, next time they see him, oh, I wanna, that's fantastic. They like the idea, so much so that we've had um, uh, two candidates come forward in the last few weeks who had been handed the document the, the week before, a few weeks before, to stand as MP for an in, as an independent for direct democracy. So most of the people we're looking at are independent. Uh, we've been looking at reform, but reform, the issue with them that we found is that, that they, you know, that they're not so 100% behind this idea, which makes me worry. All right, now, Nigel Farage is talking about it and behind it. Andrew Bridgen is definitely behind it. It's going in his leaflets. But, you know, we want to see the ones who are going to go for this system are going to offer you a system where you're in control. If they're not and you're getting some halfway house, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with them, quite frankly. Okay, but there is one party that's just going through a renaming process now that is backing this 100%, and that's the Independence for Direct Democracy. So they will be developing their, their uh, proposal for you all in the future. Right, I think we're about done. What's the next one, please? Yeah, we are done. So thank you all very much. Hopefully we'll have a better future, and I'll be with direct democracy. Thank you.